One of the main arguments for keeping the Elgin marbles in Britain is the suggestion that they're safer here and better looked after. But the writer William St. Clair disagrees. In St. Clair's view, the British Museum has, in the past, failed in its duty of care for the Elgin marbles. This is the story of when that happened and why. They had suffered a lot on the building from two and a half thousand years of weathering, but in the 19th century there seemed to be a good deal of what they called cleaning to get back at what they thought was the, uh, the pristine whiteness. And then in the 20th century, in 1937 and 38, there was this disaster of Lord Devine. Devine was an unscrupulous art dealer. He made his fortune by uh, buying old pictures, stripping them, repainting them, revarnishing them, and selling them to people. The deal with Duveen was that he would finance the building of a new gallery for the Elgin Marbles. Frankly, he wanted his name to be associated with the greatest masterpieces of, of the world, and it's still called the Duveen Gallery. The museum official authorities simply lost control and handed over control of the, of the Elgin marbles to, to Devine's agents for about 18 months. And he got the workmen to, to scrape uh, uh, some of the sculptures, at least we don't know quite how many, with metal tools, with uh, wire brushes, with copper chisels, and with carborundum, which is then the hardest substance uh, other than diamond known to science, in an effort to make them more white. So what we have now is, um, is, is not the historic surfaces that came down to us uh, when, when Lord Elgin took them from the Parthenon. But when interest in uh, ancient art revived at the time of the Renaissance, most of the statues that were found came from Italy, where the marble is very white. And from the time of Michelangelo onwards, modern Greek sculpture has tended to be white. And in the 18th century, Winkelmann, who was one of the first art historians, German, propounded the theory that the, the essential difference between sculpture and painting was that sculpture would be colorless, it would be form, and that white was the essence of beauty and the essence of purity. Winkelmann, who was extremely influential, not so much in the, that everybody was reading his book, but he put into words a general thought, he narrativized a notion that was uh, common all over Europe about the, what distinguished sculpture from painting, that it was form and that whiteness was the, was the ideal. And so it came as quite a shock when the first Greek sculptures were discovered in Greece in the 18th century, that it gradually emerged that they had been painted both the buildings and the sculptures. And there was long resistance to, the, to this discovery, although it was made in the 18th century. And many people still, I think nowadays, expect sculpture to be white. There's various reconstructions which you can look at, including some in the outer gallery of the British Museum. But certainly the building itself was highly colored in, in blues and reds and golds. The, the sculpture also seems to have been colored. There, there are features on the Parthenon sculptures which cannot be understood unless there is paint there, and also metal attachments, the bridles of the, of the horses. It, it would have looked very different from what you see now. And on the whole, Greek marble has iron in it, and the iron gradually comes to the surface, and unlike Italian marble, Greek marble tends to become brown, sometimes black, orange, a variegated range of colors, which you can see on some of the surviving sculptures over here, for example. The most vivid evidence of, uh, of what Devine's agents did is to be seen in this piece, which is the chariot of the sun god rising from the sea at dawn. This is the head of the sun god Helios. And if you, if you look, you can see on the right-hand side, his neck is still highly polished. Although it's black, it's highly polished. But on the left-hand side, across this line, is what Devine's agents did. They scraped it to this dull, matte white, which is what uh, Devine wanted. You can also see that on the right-hand side, there are a good deal of 
of the marks of the original artists, the tools of the original artists of the 5th century BC, whereas on, on the other side, uh, the, these have gone. The reason it's so vivid is that this piece was, was undergoing cleaning, as they call it, when it was discovered what was going on. So you see, you see the before and the after side by side, and the scale of the damage, both the archaeological and the, the aesthetic damage that has occurred. The horse's head, which has been iconic, really, of the whole Elgin marbles in many ways, is, it's, is one that has suffered most. That is a piece which the official report, which has hitherto been suppressed, described as having been skinned. It may only be a, a fraction of a millimetre that's been taken off the surface, but it's a, a different, different piece of art from what was given, what was entrusted to the museum. The, the marbles do not belong to the British Museum. They were entrusted to the trustees of the British Museum to preserve them and display them on, on behalf of the nation and the wider world. And it, it seems to me that we, we need an inquiry. The trustees need to give an account of their stewardship of the marbles from the time they were first entrusted to them. Those who saw the marbles in the brief interval between the Devine interventions and the, the time when they were put away in storage during the war were shocked. They talk about them being unnaturally white, lifeless, dead as casts. People at the time knew Devine. He was a very unscrupulous man. Uh, the museum was warned. He's reported at one stage of having suggested to the trustees that the marbles should be dipped in acid in order to make them more white. But nevertheless, by a mixture of uh, bribery and influence, he, he was able to, to, as I say, to take control. And uh, he was an old man, he knew he was dying, he was keen to have his immortality. And he... he and he got it. And, and, he, and he got it. Yeah. 